Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate, JJ. So today we kick off on our new kit. This is the uh, Maxitronics Sensor Robot 20. It's uh, 20 in one projects. So uh, our code name for this kit is going to be the 20 in one, uh, but it's not actually branded the 20 in one. Um, but you know, Sensor Robot 20, uh, it's just a bit long and cumbersome. And, uh, and it's also uh, not very symmetric with everything else. So we're just going to call this guy the 20 in one. And uh, today we're going to kick off with the very first circuit. So let's pop over to the booth and put it together. And then once we're done, we'll bring it over to the bench and have a look at it. So let's get on with it. Here we are in the booth, going to put together our first uh, project in the Sensor Robot 20 uh, Maxitronics Project Lab. So uh, let's have a look at the um, <clears throat> at the brightness alarm uh, schematic. The brightness alarm, what it does, the brighter the light on a CDS cell, the <clears throat> easier the cell conducts electricity. This is known as a photoconductive effect. The brightness alarm project sounds the buzzer when the light level around the robot reaches a certain level. After you complete the wiring sequence, rotate the control knob on your circuit panel to turn on the power. Adjust the control so that the buzzer is just on the verge of sounding. Then, change the light level in your room by bringing a lamp or flashlight closer to the CDS cell. The buzzer sounds as you increase the light. How it works. The wiring forms a special circuit named after the person who invented it, who developed it. This Darlington circuit, made up of transistors Q1 and Q2, does not operate because the resistance of the CDS cell and the voltage at the base of Q1 remain low. Transistor Q3 and Q4 in block 2 try to turn transistor Q5 on or off, but because Q1 and Q2 are off, no current flows to the 1 kilo ohm resistor connected to the collector of Q5. <clears throat> no square wave voltage can pass through Q5. In the light, If the light falling on the cell becomes bright enough, the current carrying ability of the cell increases and the voltage at the base of Q5 rises. The current flows with a certain frequency to the 1.5 kilo ohm resistor connected to the collector of Q5. This generates a square wave voltage to the buzzer. The buzzer, the buzzer then sounds. So wow, we're, we're right off. This circuit immediately is uh, considerably more complex than any of the circuits we encountered in um, the previous uh, Maxitronics Electronic Project Lab. So that's pretty cool. This one has five transistors. Um, okay, cool. And it's got a CDS cell, a variable uh, resistor, 33K ohm resistor, a bunch of other resistors. There's resistors all over the place. Uh, it's like a capacitor or something up there as well. Or perhaps that's the, uh, that must be the buzzer. Yeah, interesting. And there's the pin out there at the top right. So let's throw you back over to the booth and let's put this thing together. So um, here we are in the booth and uh, you might like to watch the uh, schematic uh, as we go along. So we'll put that up there as well. All right. Well, um, it's going to follow the instructions here. Uh, we've got one to three, one to three. So I've got to get my bearings on here. Okay, there's one to three. That's wiring in the um, power to the uh, power switch. It's called the control. The control. Fair enough. That's a reasonable name for it. Oh, I'm having a bit of trouble with this spring terminal. Um, I think that the other wires were easier to use. That's my assessment based on my experience with the first wire. So there we go. We've got our first first wire in. Now we're going to go two to five. Two to five. Okay. So that's the. Um, the, the negative power over to the variable resistor, <coughs> which will, I guess, uh, control the tune of the uh, oscillator, two to five, and then five to 34. 34 is one of our um, resistors. It's a 33K resistor. Not sure what's the right length of wire to use for that. Looks like red will do it. So that's five to 34. Still getting the hang of these new wires. They're a bit different to the ones from the previous kit. 5 to 34, and then 34 to 38. 34 to 38. So that's coming into the emitter of this uh, NPN uh, transistor. 34, wiring in the 33K ohm resistor to the emitter of one of our NPN transistors. That's 38. And then it's 38 to 42. Now where's 42? Down here, another one of our... Uh, our transistors. So we're going from the emitter of Q2 to the emitter of Q3. Interesting. And then we've got 42 to 48, which is over to the emitter of Q4. I have to have a look at the schematic of this thing again before we... Uh, 
before we take it over to the bench to see if we can figure out how it actually works. Four, five, five transistors in this circuit. That seems like kind of a lot, doesn't it? And they, they mentioned the Darlington transistor. A Darlington transistor um, is obviously what we're making here. You can actually buy them pre-made. And it's basically the combination of two transistors as I understand it. So it's six, two, uh, 30, six to 30. 30's down here, it's another one of our uh, resistors. So let's put him in, number six. Oh, oh yeah, six to 30, was it? I think it was. You know, these uh, resistors and um, uh, transistors have been separated into uh, what they call multivibrator blocks. And there's multivibrator block one and multivibrator block two. Um, I'm not sure if this circuit is actually a multivibrator. I don't know. I'm not sure. And uh, next is seven to 15. So seven is on the, uh, the variable resistor. And 15, where's that? I'm still getting my head around all of these. Uh, Oh, there we go. That's wiring in the CDS cell. The CDS cell is, of course, a, a photo. It's a, it's, a, it's a photo resistor. The resistance changes. There's two kinds of light detectors that I know about. CDS is a photo resistor, but you can also get photo transistor, where the base is effectively the base of the transistor is controlled by a um, by a, a photo photo sensor, as I understand it, anyway. So what was that? What was uh, seven to fifteen? I'll put it across there. 7 to 15. And uh, <clears throat> then we've got 9 to 62. 62 sounds like it'll be far away. Here it is, another one of our transistors. This is Q5. So uh, 62, 9, 7, 62. Oh, right, that's the buzzer. 62 and 9. I might try with one of these blue ones. I'm not sure how far a blue will go. 9 to 62 just makes it 62 and 9 all right and then 62 to 50 there's 50 just here it's another one of our uh, resistors interesting that uh, I only just noticed that the uh, the multivibrator blocks here and here they have the same types of transistors but actually the uh, the um, resistors aren't the same between blocks. And it looks like our, our mix of transistors, or resistors rather, is over here in the resistor block. But, that, but the, they, these aren't symmetrical, they're not the same. You've got 1K, 1K, 33K, 10K, 33K, 10K, 1K, 1K. Interesting. So that's 62 to 50. We'll put that in here. Connecting the uh, collector of our NPN transistor Q5 over to the... 1k resistor in the resistor block. Now, I have to say, so far, I did prefer the wires in the other um, project lab. I think they were just a bit easier to get in. All right, and we've got 31 to 37. 31. Where is it? There it is. There, you can barely read it. There it is. 31. 37. All right, 31 and 37. You know, I have to say, I'm glad that in this uh, circuit we have a actual proper uh, speaker. I mean, it's still uh, one of those Paizo jobbies, but it's not um, It's not a headphone. So hopefully uh, when we do some circuits, you'll be able to hear it this time. 31 to 37 and then 37 to 63, 63 over here. I reckon that calls for a blue. What do you reckon? Just confirming 37 to 63, putting our 1K resistor over to our Q5 transistor. This is uh, connected, connecting to the emitter over here of, of uh, Q5. And 32 to 36. So 32 to 36, that's a pretty easy job. 32 to 36. All right, and then uh, 41 to 67. So 41, 41 to 67. Where is 67? 
Oh, here we go. We're going to put a capacitor into the circuit. So I think that calls for a blue wire. All right. It's hard to read the labels 41 and 31, just because they're buried in there, aren't they? Um, this was coming over to 67, was it? It was 41 to 67. So we're wiring in um, the collector of Q3 to one end of our uh, 0 0.047 microfarad ceramic capacitor. And then we've got 43 to 70. So 43 is the collector of our uh, Q3 transistor, 43 over to 70. 70 is another one of our uh, ceramic caps. Uh, this one is also 0 0.047 microfarads. So uh, the two ceramic cap caps in this, uh, in this project have the same value. So that's 43, 43 to 70, and now we've got 45 to 44. 45 to 44. So that's just hooking up uh, some resistors in series there by the look of it. I'm not sure. We'll have to see where the other ends go to know whether they're in series or not. And that's 43 to 45. And then we've got... Oh, no, that's wrong. I made a mistake. Oh, yeah. I, 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 did, I, I wired it incorrectly, but I misspoke. So it's 45 to 44. And that was correct. We did the right thing. And then 44 to 40. So we're just putting all of these resistors together on this side. I'm looking forward to having a closer look at the schematic of this. Um, I didn't have a good, good look at it already. Actually, what? No time like the present, huh? Let's throw you over here and have a bit of a squeeze down here at the uh, at the capac at the schematic. Now, I must say, I'm a, I'm no expert at, at uh, reading electronic schematics yet. I'm still getting my head around things. I uh, I understand a little bit about how a transistor. Uh, works in terms of amplification. Diodes are easy, but there are no diodes in this circuit. Resistance is actually quite simple. Um, capacitance is more complicated to understand than resistance. Um, see, the thing about the resistor is um, when you've got one, it just lets current flow, um, but it, it resists it to some degree based on its its resistance, its ohmic value. Um, capacitors, on the other hand, don't conduct in the same way a resistor does, uh, and instead they really they block, they block current, except that if it, the current is oscillating, then it passes the, the current. So uh, com capacitors are more difficult to understand. They're not like a point-to-point -point connection, whereas a res resistor kind of is. It will reduce the current um, and, and reduce the voltage, but it, it, uh, it still allows some sort of a connection, whereas capacitors not quite the same. And then the transistors aren't so difficult to understand. I mean, how they actually work, like the semiconductor, you know, silicon with the n-type and the p-type doping and all of that sort of thing. I've, I've heard about how it creates an excess of holes here and an excess of electrons here and you know like I've heard it explained but I still don't really get how a transistor is manufactured a semiconductor like a transistor is manufactured but I do understand that if you apply a voltage on the base it allows it controls the current through the emitter to the collector um, so it can be used as an amplifier and it can also be used as an electronic switch it is an it's, it's important to remember that a transistor is an analog component uh, even though it's the basis for our digital uh, processing uh, and signals. So it, uh, the, 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 um, the, the current that flows from the committed, collector to the emitter um, can be like a switch and it can also be like an amplifier. Uh, and in this schematic we've got, um, we've got five transistors and they told us about the Darlington configuration. Now if I had to guess this is the Darlington configuration over here. Um, I should probably dig up some information about Darlington transistors so that when we pop over to the bench, I can tell you more about them. Uh, and this, doesn't this just sort of, this to me looks like an oscillator. And this is probably, Q5 is probably the control. Where's the CDS cell? It's all the way over here. All the way over here. So it looks like Q5 controls the, uh, the, the speaker. And it looks like the Darlington configuration over here detects the, the CDS uh, change in resistance. And I suspect that this whole circuit here is just the oscillator for the, um, for the tone. And uh, it, we can vary uh, the 1K, 10K, 10K, 1K uh, resistors here and see if it, it will affect the tone of our circuit, and I suspect it will. So I'm not an expert, but I'm fairly confident. This is a Darlington transistor configuration. This is a, 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 a tone generator, and this controls the uh, speaker, whether it's on or off. And this is our CDS cell, so presume, and we've got our, our tuning resistor in here, not tuning, sorry, but our variable resistor in here. Um, so 
yeah, okay, that's cool. So uh, that, that, that makes at least a little bit of sense to me. Um, I think I understand basically at a block level uh, what these these parts are, and this is our Darlington configuration over here. I'm pretty sure about that. So uh, let's uh, let's keep going back over to our circuit, and uh, we'll keep putting them together. Where did we get up to? Did we do 45 to 44? I think we did. And then we did 44 to 40, which we did. And then we're going to do 40 to 39. Ah, so we're just literally wiring in all of our resistors on this block. Okay. And you know, these blocks are called the multi-vibrator block. And, uh, and the multi-vibrator, that's, that's what we're looking at. Um, it, uh, it creates the tone just by oscillating. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Uh, but I, I'm not an expert yet. Maybe if I do a few more of these kits, I'll become an expert. So we've got 39 to 8. 39 to 8. We're putting in the other end of our, uh, our buzzer. It's our piezo buzzer. So that's 39, which is the 1K uh, resistor that's in the... Uh, this is, I'm pretty sure this is a multi-vibrator, and this, in block one, is actually a Darlington uh, configuration. And this is just a good old... Q5 is just a good old transistor that turns the, uh, the buzzer on or off. All right. And then we've got uh, 8 to 4. 8 to 4, so we're just putting uh, the power in uh, for the, from the, the control switch to the uh, buzzer. You know, they call it a buzzer, but it doesn't, it's not, a, it's not an active buzzer. It's a passive buzzer. It, uh, it will only buzz if you send it in a buzzing signal. Uh, so that's why we need this whole uh, configuration over here. This will do the, uh, and, and of course the uh, capacitors are a very important component in a, um, I'm pretty sure it is a multivibrator in an oscillator anyway. I think a multivibrator is a type of oscillator that you make like it's being made here. I'm pretty sure that's how that works, but I don't know for certain. Actually, I'll tell you what. Let's just put him away over here for a second. And let's get our notebook and our pencil. Where do we keep our pencil? I was expecting to see it in plain sight. There it is. Now, we had two questions, didn't we? Okay, so uh, Darlington. We want to know uh, what, what is a Darlington transistor and what does it look like. I'm pretty sure we'll see that it looks like this. That's a Darlington. And the other thing we want to know about is um, what kind of oscillator is a multivibrator? So that's two questions to ask, okay? And, and we'll, I'll do that research. Uh, after we finish putting this together, before I take you over to the uh, to the bench for testing, so we want to know more about what Darlington transistors are, and we want to know what kind of oscillator a multivibrator is. I'm pretty sure a multivibrator is an oscillator, um, but I'll find out the details on that, and we'll we'll check that out in a minute. So let's just keep on keeping on with our project lab here. Um, it's a bit unstable. Um, where did we get up to? We got eight to four. And then 4 to 14. Where's 14? Oh, there it is. It's the other leg of the CDS cell. So that's uh, 14 and 4. 14 and 4. And 14 and 49. Where's 49? It's not here. 49. Here he is. He's just one of our resistors. So we'll jump him down there. That's no problem. 14 and 49, that's our 1K resistor from our resistor block, which goes through to Q5, our, our, our sort of controlling. Well, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that Q5 is responsible for allowing the, um, the, 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 um, the buzzer to buzz. So uh, we got 46 to 68. So where is 46? It's over here, it's the base of Q4, 46 to 68 wiring in our, um, our capacitor. Again, this is part of the multivibrator that controls the, the tone. So that's uh, 46 to 68. And we're almost there. Um, after that, we've got uh, 47 to 69. Where is 47? Over here, it's the uh, collector of Q4. 47 over to 69, which is our other capacitor here. All right. 
47 to 69. And then we've got uh, 69 to 55. That looks like we're putting in another uh, resistor. Just confirming that that's uh, 69 to 55. So 69 to 55. And the other end of that resistor, where is that going? That's a 10K resistor, 56 to 61. So it looks like it's just jumping across here somewhere. Yeah, it is, okay. So we're wiring in that 10K resistor into uh, the base of um, Q5. That's 56 to 61. It's going to confirm that. 56 to 61, that's it. All right, well, that's all the wiring. So uh, let's take this guy over to the bench and, and see what it does. Here we are on the bench. Um, I thought I might say, um, I'm actually really impressed with this uh, kit so far. This is only the... Uh, <coughs> This is only the first circuit, and already we've got Darlington transistor and mono stable, or sorry, a stable uh, uh, oscillating uh, multi vibrator. That's pretty cool. Um, I did tell you I'd do some research and tell you about these things, so that's what I've got here. I looked up the Darlington transistor, and it's basically like this. You see, as the whole device, it has an emitter and a collector and a base, but it's actually made up of two uh, discrete independent transistors. So, altogether, the whole thing's known as a Darlington. <clears throat> Uh, and it's connected uh, in this fashion, uh, and its outputs are basically makes it look like a single transistor. And you can get Darlington um, transistors pre-made in various forms, including integrated circuits and uh, the same form factor that they use for the transistors. I forget what that's called. I might ask, actually, uh, transistor uh, form factor. That's a question. I'll put it in the show notes, what they call the, the, uh, that typical three-prong, you know, um, bipolar uh, transistor. Okay, so uh, that's Darlington's. And I also told you um, uh, what kind of an oscillator is a multivibrator. And the answer is, uh, it's actually the other way around. What kind of a multivibrator is an oscillator? And the answer is that it's an A-stable multivibrator. So an A-stable multivibrator will create relaxation oscillator, which is a type of oscillator. I'll, I'll put a link in the thing. So you've got uh, A-stable um, uh, multivibrator will, will, will flip, will, will change between states. Um, which means it oscillates, which is used in this circuit to produce the tone. Then there's uh, uh, multivibrators that can be used as timers, uh, and uh, those are known as monostable um, uh, multivibrators, also called one-shot multivibrators. And then there's a third type of uh, um, multivibrator called a bistable multivibrator, and that's used to implement latches and flip-flops, which are the basis of memory in digital circuits. So um, not, not all memory is flip-flops. I believe static RAM is. So SRAM, SRAM, static RAM. I'll, uh, I'll just check that out, actually. I'll put a question there as well, and I'll, and I'll just see. Because you've got, um, in, in addition to static RAM, you've got DRAM, which is dynamic RAM. And I think that uses capacitors um, rather than uh, flip-flops. So, but I think SRAM is flip-flops. Anyway, we'll check. So um, yeah, that, that, that's all the notes that I had for you. Um, I might as well quickly just show you um, this again. You would have seen this earlier. It's the uh, instructions we followed to put together the, the kit. Um, but this part here, this part here is the uh, the Darlington. And interestingly, actually, there's a 33 kilo ohm uh, resistance that's been put in here. Um, so I don't know if you'd get that resistance Um if that'd be available in an actual like packaged Darlington transistor, or if maybe that was actually built into the Darlington transistor, I don't know. Um, anyway, that's our Darlington. And this here is our oscillator. I don't know what kind of a, a, an oscillator a relaxation oscillator is, um, but, but maybe we'll, we'll put a question mark on that too. And uh, I'll, put, I'll put some notes in the, in, in the show notes. So uh, let's power up our device. Now I, uh, I don't have power on at the moment, so let me just power up the power supply. And we're going to pull our power leads out, so they're here. All right, now we've got positive on the left, and we've got negative on the right. Let's pop them in. That looks pretty good. We'll turn our control, which is um, here, this knob, we'll turn him all the way down and off. Then uh, we'll just confirm that we're in uh, 9 volts, and we are. So let's power this guy up for nine volts. There we go. And uh, it's currently switched off. Let's put the uh, the CDS sensor uh, cloak over the thing. Now let's turn him on and adjust the, the resistance. Oh, that didn't create its own, did it? 
let's take the, uh, the, the, the sheath off. Oh, how disappointing. Nothing. What have we done wrong? I'm not sure. All right, well. Oh, there we go, there's a loose wire. Where does that go? Eight. Just uh, having a look at the instructions here. Where does eight connect to? 39 by the looks of it. Let's just confirm, I can't find it in here. There it is, 39 and eight. 39. I'll just turn him off, he is off. All right, hopefully that was the problem. Yep, that was the problem. All right, great, well we'll put the, the light dimmer on it. No, oh. Okay, so, take it away, put it on. Take it away, put it on. All right, now um, I'm just gonna power up the, uh, the old oscilloscope here and I'll grab myself a probe. And while it's booting up, I'll just plug that in. I've, uh, I managed to get my probe port in my chair. I'm going to take more care. All right. So, put that guy in there. Here's my probe. I'm uh, just waiting for the, the scope to boot. Uh, when that's done, I'll, uh, I'll bring it up on the screen for you. So what we're going to do now is just uh, um, measure the uh, output of the oscillator. Um, which will come out through the uh, speaker. All right, there we go. The scope has booted. So I'll just change it on to HDMI. And if I put him... Uh, all right, that should work. It does. All right, that's our scope at the moment. Uh, it's not got... It's not, it's not plugged in yet. So let's just have a look. At the two sides of the, uh, the buzzer. Now let's take him off. That's a bit noisy, isn't it? It'd be good if there was a, um, that's cool. So we can control it a little bit. I'll just let it go on, and then I'll hit auto on the scope here, um, and that's uh, that's holding our. So that's our that's our tone. It's basically a square wave, isn't it? Let me just uh, zoom in a little bit. There he is. Uh, make him quiet again. And if we just go uh, measure add uh, frequency, that'll be good. And on we go. And the frequency is 1.5 kilohertz. 1.5 kilohertz. So uh, we could probably change that uh, frequency um, by changing some of the uh, values in our uh, well, I'm a little bit confused here actually. We must be missing a wire. I'm going to I'm going to have a pause for a minute and I'm just going to see what the problem is and I'll uh, or if there, there even is a problem and I'll be back in just a tick. Okay, I'm back. Now, let me just tell you what, what my concern was. I was trying to figure out the, um, how the resistors were wired in for the multivibrator part of the circuit over here, and it seemed to me that point 0.33 hadn't been connected because you can see there are no wires on point 0.33, which is the base of the, uh, the, the transistor. But it turns out, actually, um, point 0.33 is on the base of the transistor and also on the base of the resistor. So that just saves having to wire in an extra wire, which is actually a, a, a good, good thinking. It reduces the amount of work you need to do to put the circuit together. So actually, that, that, that resistor is wired onto the base of that transistor. It's just that it's done automatically and we don't need to, to, to do that ourselves. Um, and I, uh, I figured that out by looking on the pinout diagram and seeing that there's nothing there. Um, and I confirm too down here on Q1, um, point 0.33 uh, is indicated as connecting to uh, point, the 33K ohm the resistor, which comes out at point 0.30. So um, yeah, there, there, there is no problem there. That's good. Um, and what I wanted to do was show you how the tone would vary um, if we introduced uh, a different resistor. Um, 
at the moment the the the, the tune is uh, a 1.5 kilohertz um, square wave is basically what we're looking at. Um, and if we put in a resistor, um, that would change. Uh, but it, it doesn't seem to me exactly clear how we would do that. Um, what will we do? Let's uh, let's get two blue wires. Here's our stash of blue wires. So we just want two of those guys. Is blue long enough? I think it is. All right. And what I'm going to do is just take. Uh, or I could do with a bit longer. Let's say, what are we going to do? I'm going to wire this guy in. I actually might even get myself a yellow, a yellow uh, wire that's just a little bit longer. So that goes into the um, the middle of the control resistor. So what we've done is we've uh, wired in an additional 100 kilo ohms. So um, that should change the tone that we hear. So uh, let's turn it on and the frequency is still being measured on our scope. So when we turn it on, the frequency is clocking in. Oh, fascinating, at 1.5 kilohertz. So we have effectively changed nothing. Interesting. I was expecting that to have affected the signal in some way. What if we try and wire in a different one here? Uh, what do we want to do? We want to wire in an extra. Let's take him out, take him out, take him out, pop him in there. And let's just see what effect that has on the, the tone. Oh, we're not getting anything now. That's surprising. I wasn't expecting that. All right, so we've got blue. Oh, dear. What have I done? Oh, no, that's right. It must just be too high a value for that part of the circuit because it's uh, it seriously affected the... Uh... Yeah, okay. Well, let's see if we can put it back in good working order just by restoring our, our things and see or see if we've bumped something or disconnected something. Is that going to work? Yeah, that works. Wow, okay. Well, it turns out the 100K um, made too much of a difference. How about uh, just a, a humble little 3.9K? What about if we try that? So um, again, we're just gonna wire that in to uh, be an extra uh, resistance over here. And let's see what that does. No, doesn't like that at all, does he? Fascinating. I wasn't expecting that. I would have thought that would work. Uh, just goes to show how much I've got to learn, doesn't it? If we pull those out, okay, that's still working. I don't know, I don't know why. I would have thought that changing the resistance over here a little bit would uh, would affect the um, the tone, but it uh, it didn't seem to, and I don't know why. Anyway, um, I think uh, I think we're ready to, to wrap up this video, aren't we? So I'll throw you back over there. So that was uh, that was a good fun project. That was uh, uh, the brightness alarm, uh, the first of our sensor robot twenty. Uh, project so there's 19 projects to go um but yes i was quite impressed what did you think i thought it was good we got to see uh, a darlington transistor uh applied uh and we learned about uh the a stable multi-vibrator which creates a relaxation oscillator i'll uh, i'll tell you more about relax oscillation uh in the uh, in the show notes um there's uh there was a a, a, a passive buzzer that picked up the tone from the the multi-vibrator uh there was a transistor controlling that uh there was a switch there was a, a resistor to uh to calibrate the uh, the CDS cell, which is the light detecting cell, and it, it worked uh, as advertised. When we uh, changed the bright brightness level, the the tone went on or off. Uh, it is interesting to note, and perhaps this is quite obvious to you, um, the, uh, the 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 tone is either on or off with this circuit. It would be possible to make a circuit where the tone changed depending on the brightness. This circuit doesn't work like that. It just gets to a level. And if it reaches the level, the tone goes on and that's it. And it's always the same tone, no matter how bright it is. Uh, but you don't need to do it that way. You could actually have the, uh, the, the CDS cell controlling the tone. So as it got brighter, the pitch got lower or higher, depending on how you had it all configured. Uh, anyway, look, I really enjoyed this first, um, uh, first lab. I think that bodes well. I, I'm looking forward to, uh, to continuing this, uh, which we will soon. So if you'd like to see the next project, don't forget to subscribe. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll get this video up soon. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.